present my work uh, uh, with dance and, uh, and media, basically, and uh, particularly with my work with uh, software. Yes. And uh, how is uh, your relationship with all this? You know, I know that you had been doing work in this dance field, dance and technology field, for quite a while. And you are based in? Zurich. In Zurich. And you're from Spain. <laughs> I'm Spanish Swiss. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, my relation, uh, God, it goes uh, very far back to um, to 1995 when I started working basically with uh, with life forms, mm -hmm. and I have developed a whole methodology of uh, choreographing based on the on softwares, not only life forms, but uh, all sort of software for to apply for stage settings, basically. Yeah. With video or uh, interaction with uh, video images and audios, but my my main concern is working uh, using software to directly affect the the body body movements. No? Yeah. And uh, it's been a very long process, uh, yeah. almost 15 years of uh, researching how can one uh, produce new movements that. Uh, that are not affected by the personal abilities or wishes from the choreographer. Yeah. So that means I uh, tried to, to set up a neutral choreographer, <laughs> a filter, which is software, which uh, uh, produces, uh, by means of algorithms, uh, sequences, scores mm -hmm. of movements, and these are passed on to the dancers. Yeah. And my particular concern was that, uh, that a dancer doesn't have to imitate how I move, but also not to use the improvisation of dancers, because then they bring their own, uh, their own habits, their old drill techniques, mm -hmm. and their old uh, wishes, so to say, uh, sort of speak of how they want to move, you know, yeah. how they want to portray themselves. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing, a, I'm cutting this uh, procedure, which was. Uh, uh, mostly the case in the in the 90s and in the yeah. first 10 years of this century. Yeah. So and uh, so in certain way you are uh, let's say well disembodying the figure of the choreographer and but you know explain me how because the Con Cunningham has done a lot of the efforts or he did as many pioneers you know this experimentation with life forms and how you put yourself in this. Uh, you know, in the context also with uh, Merce Cunningham. Well, uh, as far as, I've go as I know from Cunningham, uh, from speaking with dancers who work with him, from reading papers, yeah. he, he arrived at the point uh, of using the life forms, really uh, uh, segmenting body parts and uh, trying to imitate this virtual figure. Yeah. I, I think I, I arrived to this same point, how, why use a software at all to choreograph when you can do it better with the body. Yeah. But there was this uh, philosophical uh, background there of shortcutting the, the human body or the choreographer's pre preferences, that was uh, one thing. So, you know, using the software to, to cut, uh, cut the, segment the body parts and building up uh, together. Mm -hmm. But my main concern also was uh, of uh, staging the the the, the 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 operational logic of the of computers. Mm -hmm. That's one one concern. So building the dance language based on purely software, mm -hmm. uh, and then the next step was really to find new rhythms. How can I affect timing mm -hmm. using software? That means that I also, with my improvisation or whatever, my 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 dance, that I don't fix the, the rhythm myself, the mm -hmm. timing, and the dancer also not. So mm -hmm. I started working with algorithms mm -hmm. to try and find interesting rhythms, you know, like yeah. using uh, basically Pascal's triangle. Yeah, like then uh, you start kind of using this kind of mathematical mathematical scores, uh, uh, scores or uh, algorithms. Yeah. To, yeah. So, uh, Pascal's triangle was more the most interesting one, but then there was a Lindenmeyer system. There was a, a two rings change to mm -hmm. to specify the angle of rotations of. Mm -hmm. The, of the neck, you know, and mm -hmm. mixing all this together to see what comes out, you know. Okay. So unpredictability was a very important uh, factor that I wanted to get out. Something that I that I cannot predict in what timing a person is going to do that and what sort of movements. You know? yeah. uh, awkwardness was also a, a, a thing that I was interested in, in <laughs> trying to get in. And the, the mechanic, you know, what quality of movements uh, can I can I get by uh, by 
by interpreting what the software uh, produced. And then uh, this was, uh, you know, after 20 years of choreographing, you, you, you tend to repeat yourself, you know, so yeah. the software was really a breakthrough to, to break my, yeah. my patterns, or the patterns yeah. that we all how, how was the reaction of the dancers with this, you know, because I, I can imagine that it, it, it has been, it was hard perhaps when you started, because it's well, practically the not, not teaching a step, not telling to improvise directly. Yeah. <laughs> well, the dancers, it was extremely uncomfortable for the dancers because yeah. they had never worked like this. Yeah. And I actually, I, I remember I, I rented a, 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 an office mm -hmm. which was only uh, two by two meters. <laughs> and I did this on purpose because the minute we go into a studio, we tend to use all the space and move around. You know? uh, wow. And I say, okay, no, we have a computer here, we're in, a, in an office, and we're going to just work out uh, possible combinations of... Uh, <laughs> of yeah. how to move uh, fragmentarily, so to speak. And this was extremely uncomfortable for the dancer because they just couldn't move you know, as <laughs> yeah. they would like to. Yeah. And from there, then I would go to the studio and then the, the result was that they, they moved differently. Yeah. This on the aspect of uh, movement uh, um, building, so mm -hmm. of, of creating material. No? Mm -hmm. in, the, in terms of uh, timing, Again, this was extremely restrictive because they would maybe just get a score, you know, a sheet yeah. of paper <laughs> and say, okay, we have to follow this rhythm, no? Like one, one, two, one, oh. one, three, one. Mm -hmm. With lots of repetitions, uh, reversing of phrases, uh, mirroring of phrases, whole procedures that they involved the dancers more, let's say, their brains, you know, they really had to think. Yeah. And on top of that, the, the timing, they had to count all the time. And yeah. these are dancers who were used to yeah. just improvising, moving around yeah. with not a given timing, not, yeah. not even having to dance to music anymore. And, and not only before. counting in one, two, three, eight, or four, or eight. No, but really, uh, really having to think where are the stops and uh, synchronize yeah. with a whole lot of other dancers. And, uh, and they had to be extremely precise. Yeah. So like, how did you do like in group pieces to keep them synchronized if they're oh, counting? Yeah, that <laughs> took a long time to find out. If we don't dance to music with a beat anymore, how do we keep yeah. six dancers synchronized? Well, at first I put a, a beat in the, my, one of my first pieces, Zone, which was with electronic music without a beat. I, put a, I actually put a beat into the mm -hmm. uh, 60 beeps, beeps per minute, just a click. Uh -huh. in the music, you know, which was disturbing in that the audience heard all the time this, this rhythm in the background, but it was, it became something interesting, something mm -hmm. very ritualistic. Mm -hmm. But then I decided that uh, how to find out a, a system that, uh, that it keeps uh, all the dances in chrome and, uh, um, and I, I just worked with metronome. That was my, mm -hmm. that was uh, the dirigent. The, mm -hmm. the, and then uh, we, we figured out uh, a system of transmitting, how to transmit the, the pulse directly to the dancers on stage and our performance without mm -hmm. the audience hearing it. We mm -hmm. had some a transmitter built, wow. feed, feed uh, with a metronome, and, uh, and dancers had a receiver in their chests yeah. with a little... Uh, <laughs> the nice thing was they had a little lead that indicated the beat throughout the piece, and this I, I showed it, no? Uh -huh. Almost and like they, a heartbeat. Yeah. Like a heartbeat, exactly. And then they had it by uh, uh, earphones. Uh -huh. They receive a little click on the on the ear, and it's all synchronized. Huh. And uh, and that's how we solved that problem. That was uh, the very very yeah. beginning. It yeah. gave us some uh, there's some really nice anecdotes. Yeah. That it gave us problems. <laughs> uh, we were in Spain. Uh, performing on a big stage and of course uh, the stages they have all this metal there that yeah. work like an antenna yeah. and in the middle Crazy of the interference, yeah. yeah. in the middle of performance somebody moved uh, a little bit the, the sequence, so to, uh, the, so to speak, no? the frequency uh -huh. and she got a football match in the ear <laughs> throughout the whole performance and the poor thing had to dance the whole piece Oh my With God! A football match in her. In her <laughs> she, she went crazy. Yeah. So you know, I know that this is you have done a lot of work in this area. So I want you to to skip the, or just to go. Then you have worked with a mechanic. This idea of of of, of taking the the persona of of the choreographer and the decision making, and then also you have choreograph robots and also work with robots on stage. So can you yeah. just talk a little yeah. bit about that? Well, working with the body as a, as a pure mechanical uh, 
system, machine, mm -hmm. uh, led uh, somehow, I, well, uh, I got a commission to do a work for a, a dance piece with a robot, with Robot Lab, one mm -hmm. of these uh, KUKA robots that they, they used to build cars. Mm -hmm. And this was really very interesting, very limiting, because the robot had only three, <laughs> three joints, like a big arm. basically, like a big arm, yeah. uh, with more rotation than we have in uh, in uh, how you call this? The joints? In yeah. your joints, yeah. basically, you know, the, the, this joint, you can actually move it all the way around. Mm -hmm. So I created a whole piece with, uh, with this robot, mm -hmm. and then I decided to map uh, the rotation, this choreography of the robot to dancers, you know? Yeah. And so I chose only the top part of the dancers, uh -huh. uh, basically the arms, the torso, and the, and the neck. So yeah. I created a padded dough with a robot and the dancer completely synchronized using yeah. the same, uh, the same mapping, no, mm -hmm. the, the same choreography basically. You know? Yeah. And I put them together on stage. So that was my first uh, experience working with with robot and with the machinic. So yeah. I tried to make the. Perfect.